Question. What happens when two large renewable energy power production companies merge to become one of the largest in the world? You guessed it. I make a video to discuss my opinion from a long-term investor's perspective. Hi, I'm Gio, and welcome to Renewable Energy Investment. This channel offers a high-level discussion of publicly traded renewable energy companies, because building an investment portfolio starts with building awareness. Okay, so on March 16, 2020, a definitive merger agreement was announced for Brookfield Renewable Partners to acquire all of the outstanding shares of common stock of Terraform Power in a stock-for-stock -stock deal. Essentially, each Terraform Power shareholder will receive the equivalent value of Brookfield Renewable Partners so that they become shareholders of Brookfield Renewable Partners instead of Terraform Power, which becomes a part of Brookfield on the date the deal closes. I'll discuss the reasons why I think this merger is a great business move, but first, let's quickly summarize Terraform and Brookfield's business for context. Brookfield and Terraform both operate as energy yield codes. A yield co is a company that is formed to own operating assets that produce a predictable cash flow, primarily through long-term contracts. Yield cores are expected to pay a major portion of their earnings in dividends, which may be a valuable source of funding for their parent companies, which own a sizable stake in the yield co. In Brookfield and Terraform's case, they purchase large-scale wind, solar, or hydro-renewable energy projects, then enter into long-term contracts to sell the electricity generated. This locks in predictable revenues and allows both companies to distribute the free cash flow generated as dividends to their shareholders. Brookfield Renewable Partners This company has been on an absolute tear for the past 20 years. According to Bloomberg, its annualized total return of 17% completely dominates the S&P 500's return of 5% and the S&P Utilities Index's return of 8%. According to Brookfield's 2019 annual report, the company's goal is to deliver 12-15% to long-term total returns while maintaining an investment-grade balance sheet. It has delivered on the high end of this goal during recent years. Brookfield's business model is to utilize their global reach to acquire and develop high-quality renewable power assets below intrinsic value, financing them on a long-term, low-risk, and investment-grade basis through a conservative financing strategy, and then optimize cash flows by applying their operating expertise to enhance value. Brookfield generates most of its energy from hydro located in North America, but also has significant wind and solar projects spanning Asia, Europe, and Latin America. Brookfield's hydropower base means its energy generation is extremely reliable. Hydroelectricity is considered the gold standard of renewable energy because of the long-lived nature of these assets. A typical hydro installation can last for more than 100 years, and aside from the initial impacts of new construction, hydro has minimal long-term environmental disturbance clean and able to be turned on and off as required, this energy is highly valued. Water levels can have an impact, but hydro energy largely just keeps going and going without fail. This makes it usable as a base load power source. The only challenge faced by hydro generation is a lack of opportunities to construct new facilities, as there are only so many locations where hydroelectric power plant can be built, and most are already taken. This places a premium valuation on existing operations, and it's a pretty powerful moat. Terraform Power Terraform has approximately $9 billion worth of power generating assets under its control, located primarily in the United States, Canada, Europe, and Chile. It currently generates 59% of its energy from wind and 41% from solar, and does not have any hydro assets. Historically, Terraform has not been particularly good at managing its balance sheet, which currently has a sub-investment grade rating. As a result, Terraform generally has to pay higher interest rates on loans it takes out to finance its energy projects. In the past, Terraform has disappointed shareholders. It severely underperformed the NASDAQ, the S&P 500, and its peer group over the last five years. On the bright side, Terraform's poor stock performance has allowed Brookfield to swoop in and take over the company by purchasing its stock at a low price. Brookfield saw value in Terraform's assets and an opportunity to utilize its asset management expertise to increase and maximize the productivity of Terraform's assets. Ever since Brookfield bought 61% of Terraform in 2017, effectively gaining control, Terraform has been heading in a much better direction. Soon, Brookfield will own 100% of Terraform. Now, Terraform is not buying just to grow. It is being disciplined in acquiring assets that are favorably priced. It also has focused its energy on improving the operations of the assets it already owns by, for example, upgrading turbines and its wind fleet. Efficiency is key for energy yield curves. 
The name of the game for an energy yield goat is efficiency. By keeping total cost as low as possible while simultaneously generating as many watts of electricity as possible, a yield code generates the most free cash flow possible to distribute as dividends. And this is exactly what the merger accomplishes, and why I think it was a great move to unlock value for shareholders. There are three main things an energy yield code can do to improve its efficiency. First, improving expertise in spotting and running higher return energy projects. Second, minimizing the costs of running the business. Third, obtaining lower costs of financing. This merger accomplishes all of these items. The Brookfield management team has over 100 years of infrastructure investing, project management, and acquisition experience, along with deep renewable sector expertise. Extending Brookfield's expertise to Terraform Power's projects should be an upgrade. The combined company will enjoy cost-saving synergies. It can consolidate much of its general corporate and administrative processes. Duplicative expenses can be eliminated. Accounting, payroll, and other functions can be combined and only a single consolidated audited financial report is required. You get the point. The result is that a higher percent of each project's revenues will be able to be distributed back to the shareholders. Perhaps most importantly, Terraform will no longer have to pay higher interest rates due to its non-investment grade balance sheet. It will benefit from increased access to capital and liquidity since it has the backing of Brookfield Asset Management as a sponsor. Brookfield Asset Management is a leading global alternative asset manager with more than 500 billion of assets under management. Its roughly 60 billion market cap gives it some heft. Colloquial speaking, the combination allows Brookfield Renewable Partners to punch above its weight class. Additionally, the merger allows Brookfield to acquire many renewable energy projects in one swift transaction, keeping transaction costs low. The combination increases both companies' technological and geographical diversity, resulting in even more stable cash flows. Just a quick reminder to help support this channel by clicking the thumbs up button. Also, I invite you to click the subscribe button on the bottom right so you can follow along with our discussion of Brookfield Renewable Energy Partners and other wonderful renewable energy companies in future episodes. All right, back to it. Favorable market opportunities. The combined company should be very well positioned to take advantage of unique market opportunities presenting themselves at this time. Specifically, interest rates are currently at all time lows. Financing long-term revenue generating projects with low interest rate loans could lock in high margins for years to come. The 2020 global health scare has resulted in asset prices falling substantially from 2019 levels. Brookfield should be able to acquire renewable energy assets at a discount over the next few years and has plenty of liquidity to take advantage of any such opportunities. As the levelized cost of energy for renewable projects becomes cheaper than nuclear and coal over the next few years, the return on invested capital of renewable energy yield curves could substantially outperform traditional utilities who will have to spend lots of money phasing out old plants and transitioning to renewable energies from scratch. This means Brookfield and Terraform could enjoy a low cost of energy production advantage when compared to certain other utility companies. Dividends As of May 5, 2020, Brookfield is expected to pay a forward dividend of $2.17 per share for a yield of just less than 5%. The company stated that it is targeting a 5-9% annual growth rate in dividends and expects such distributions to account for 70% of funds from operations going forward. For Yield Co., a dividend payout ratio of 70% is not bad at all. That leaves them with 30% of free cash flows to reinvest in the company. My opinion. I have to admit, Brookfield Renewable Energy Partners' total return of 17% per year over the past 20 years is very impressive, and I think most investors would be very happy if they hit their goal to deliver a 12-15% to total return per year going forward. Although I consider myself more of a growth-oriented investor who typically prefers companies that reinvest earnings to grow more of the business, with a company like Brookfield, I am more than happy to invest in a yield co for its dividends. Because Brookfield is focused on strategic, efficient growth as opposed to hypergrowth, I want Brookfield to invest its capital only when bargain opportunities arise. There simply are not enough bargains available on a yearly basis for Brookfield to efficiently deploy a majority of its free cash flow. Thus, in this instance, returning excess cash to shareholders through a high-yielding dividend makes sense in my opinion. Ultimately, when I invest in a yield co, I want the yield to be as high as possible. This means I need to purchase the shares at a very low price, so the dividend is high relative to my purchase price. The current dividend yield of under 5%, although pretty solid, 
is just not high enough to make me want to jump to purchase at the moment. With that said, if the price drops enough and the yield becomes larger, I would like to pick up a few shares. The combination of plenty of liquidity, an investment grade balance sheet, extremely low interest rates, the potential for declining asset prices during an economic downturn, and a very experienced management team leads me to suspect that Brookfield is likely to obtain fantastic deals over the next few years on income generating assets. Factor in the cost savings Brookfield will enjoy thanks to the merger, and this company could be positioned very well over the next decade. The stable long term cash flow, comprised mostly of hard to come by hydropower, would provide diversification boost to my portfolio. I would likely limit the size of any position to a very small percent of my portfolio, as to me, a yield co is just not the type of stock that I would want to build my portfolio around. One thing I would note is that Brookfield is a Canadian partnership, so U.S. shareholders' tax reporting requirements could be more complicated than with a typical U.S. stock. Personally, I'd prefer to keep my taxes as simple as possible. Thankfully, Brookfield said that they will be offering equivalent shares in the form of a corporation, which will trade on the New York Stock Exchange when the merger closes. In the meantime, Terraform Power stock can be purchased now in an exchange for Brookfield Corporation stock upon the merger. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. I invite you to subscribe to this channel so you can follow along on our discussion of Brookfield, Terraform, and other wonderful companies in future episodes. Let me know in the comments below. Do you own any Brookfield or Terraform stock? Or are you interested in buying some? What reasons do you have? Is it diversification like me? Or are you a dividend growth investor? Oh, and let me know if you liked the video by clicking the thumbs up button below.